He's very much a big game performer, and he's made it 1-11 to 2-2. 12 scores for Kilkenny, still only four for Galway, and they've got a long, long time now, Galway without scoring, since the 17th minute. Yeah, Jaron, that's all the Kilkenny forwards now have scored from play. Cooney beaten, that was brilliantly taken in the air there by Richie Hogan in midfield, was drifted out. Brian Hogan, his namesake, now wearing number 31 in the yellow helmet, making some progress, fancying a point himself, and it's stopped on the line by James Skehel. And Skehel stumbled, Walter Welch coming in, and the goalkeeper in difficulty, helped out by David Collins. And the goalkeeper and the uh, full forward tangled for a moment. Thankfully it has uh, ceased, and play continues. Yeah, John, I'm not sure how comfortable James Skehel looks after that, you know. Put his arm the way he's holding it there. Fergal Flannery is the sub goalkeeper wearing number 16 so he's in there in place of James Skehel big long one down towards Richie Hogan once again he's having quite a match causing major problems and underlining that with a lovely point here point in each half for the uh, very talented Richie Hogan and really a big big handful for Kevin Hines down there yeah absolutely and one possession there again and simple score tapped over the bar that's the difference between the teams Kilkenny are scoring freely Trying to play it out here was uh, Killian Buckley. Finally, it's back with Andy Smith. And a chance of a score here for Andy Smith. And he's put it over the bar. Beautifully done. He's a great driving force in midfield, Andy Smith. And that's his uh, first point in Galway's first point of the match to come from play. Back again it comes for Kilkenny. Trying to build another attack here. Walter Welch trying to reach down to his bootlaces to get that ball up. Not easy when you're 6 3, 6 4. Ball comes back up here again, dangerously so to Damien Hayes. Hayes looking for a bit of room. Back to Cyril Donlan. Still Donlan, and the referee has blown his whistle. Doesn't count. The whistle went before the shot, and the goal doesn't count. David Berkson sends all the Galway fans all around Grove Park are annoyed by that. But the whistle did go, and there wasn't any advantage given. I know it did, Ger, but you'd have to say... Damien Hayes was more a foul, I'd say, than Cyril Donlan, and Donlan was true, you know, given the benefit. Damien Hayes was definitely pulled back there, it should have been a free, it wasn't given. Then he gets out here, gives the ball here now, Donlan breaks through. And like, where was the foul there? He just broke the tackle, there was no foul. And it, it probably was for the earlier one, so five points still between them, rather than two. Joe Canning is going call, to take this free, big, it big, is a big call. It's a big call at this stage, he'd probably tap it over the bar. The angle is a bit tight for him, so he does do exactly that. And now it's uh, five points for Joe Canning. That's a big, big uh, turning point in the game. And as far as I can see, Sir Donald Moss and Fowler just broke the tackle and buried the ball, and I think that the, the free should have been given. The in as far as Henry Shefflin. Shefflin beats his man, Cooney goes after him. And Shefflin takes too many steps, and it's a free out. A decision going against Henry Shefflin. Free to Galway. Chance for them to launch another attack. It's taken quickly by... Tony O'Gregan into those forwards who look to have plenty of scores among them if they can get decent ball in there in front of uh, David Herity's goal. Two goals from play in the first half. They're appealing this one here in particular, Cyril Donnellan. Linesman is there is uh, John Sexton from Cork, originally from Limerick. And it's a line ball given to Goldwell. Yeah, interesting to say, I think it might have been the other way, but it's Joe Canning who's got to take it. Well, he's been known to put these over. Can he do so? He certainly can. Oh, that's his trademark signature skill. Brilliantly done by Big Joe, who's got a sixth. And now it's 1.13 to 2.7. Absolutely brilliant skill. And now we have a game on, a game in our hands. We have to say, God, we have settled down really now and came with much more freedom than they did in the first half. In as far as Niall Burke, running into a lot of Kilkenny players, David Burke, his namesake in the green helmet, number 10, trying to come in to help. Picked up again by Niall Burke, slipped off there as far as Joe Canning, off the post and back out. How did that stay out? It comes as far as TJ Reid, and it's a huge lead off for Kilkenny. Galway with one goal disallowed already, and now Joe Canning has hit the ball of the upright. Henry Shefflin at the other end, 65 metres from the Galway target, picks out a colleague over there. It's young Killian Buckley, the 20-year-old UCD student, who puts it over the bar. 
this point for him in this final. And Kilkenny fans are much, much happier. They lead once again by four. But there's a long time to go. We're only in the 13th minute of the second half. Yeah, Joe, but that's a four-point swing. And that's a great score by Killian Buckley, a young player from the middle of the field, and he's done very well today. Well, there's no time for Galway to feel sorry for themselves. They've got plenty of time to do something about the scoreline. Tommy Welch trying to get the ball out. He was uh, felled after he played it away. And James McGrath goes in quickly, checks with his linesman over there, Barry Kelly, another West Smith man to see whether he got a better view of what happened. But there was, I think, a late challenge there on Tommy Welsh and the uh, player who's got to be spoken to. It's a red card for Cyril Donnelly. Yeah, I think the hold was swung back. And it was Barry Kelly who called it, now the linesman called it, he was right beside it. But you can see, as the JJ Delaney coming off, his head is split here, he's jogging off there and... Let's have a look at it again, 49 it. minutes in. Yeah, he swung straight across the head. JJ Delaney was holding him back a bit and he swung back and hit him, yeah, and JJ's gone off there with a head injury as well. So Galway lose a man, they are four points behind and Noel Hickey is going to come on as a temporary sub, I imagine, wearing number 17. So Noel Hickey, one of those hoping to collect a medal here today, which would be his ninth. Watching as Richie Parr takes it in his stride and flawlessly glides it over the bar. He's got a goal and two points now, Richie trying to emulate what his dad has done before and pick up yet another All-Ireland medal here. His dad, Richie Senior, was a star in the 80s, and Richie's starring here, and it's 1.15 to 2.7. It's 15 against 14 as well, of course. TJ Reid couldn't take it in his stride, but it comes back out here, and that is Walter Walsh. He's got three points. I was talking to Eddie Kerr yesterday about his debut in a replay back in 1959. He came on as a sub that day, he told me. Walter started and he's got three against Anthony Cunningham's team. This is out again as far as Richie Power. Chasing after him, Damien Hayes trying to hook him. Did enough. Tony O'Gregan from 65 metres out from his own goal. This would be a good point if it goes over. It's a great score. It's his first point in this year's championship. And Tony O'Gregan gets it back to a seven-point difference once again, 118 to 2-8. Richie Power this time, stepped out over the sideline, ball was in play clearly. It's Richie Hogan, and who got that last point across towards Henry Shefflin, runs on to TJ Reid, very awkward angle here, trying to make a better angle for himself, Cohen's in front of him, and that time it comes back, but it's put in the back of the net, brilliant thing, and that should be that, Walter Welch, his first ever goal in the championship, coming here in the final, he makes a 2.19 to 2.8, a goal after 58 minutes, a goal and three for big Walter, TJ Reid initially, turning inside Johnny Cohen, and watch as Flannery the goalkeeper got his stick to it, batted it out, only for big Walter Welch to be right on hand and place it in the back of the goalway net. Comes back in here once again, Andy Smith trying to cause a little bit of consternation for the Kilkenny backs, but forward players almost doing it like individuals at this stage. The greater measurement is coming from Kilkenny. It's a measured approach all the way from Philly and Buckley in there as far as the substitute. And Colin Fennelly announces his return by putting it in the back of the Galway net. Goal number three for Kilkenny. And now they are simply routing Galway. He's not on too long, Colin Fennelly, but he's got another goal here, and the manager is happy. Well, Brian Cody is going to be thrilled, you know, he got it bang on today, Walter Walsh and Johnny Cohen did his job, took him off, and Colin Fennelly coming on, obviously very disappointed not to be playing, hungry, used his strength there, held off uh, the defender, and, you know, one-handed into the back of the net. And there is uh, number 17, Noel Hickey, and Kieran Joyce is the one who makes way on this occasion. Yeah, what a servant Noel Hickey has been to Kilkenny over the years and coming on here now also to win his ninth All-Ireland uh, obviously they can start them all but an absolutely brilliant full-back over the years Jackie Terrell waited this time stepping in is Johnny Glynn what about that Galway want to finish with a flourish they may be beaten but they're not completely and absolutely down and they have young stars to look ahead to at future years like 19-year-old Jonathan Glynn, and this was a fair old rasper, and that is the sixth goal of this final.
Galway finishing with Damien Hayes here trying to set up another chance for Joe Canning and that one has gone over the bar brilliantly from play this time he's got nine points in this final but it's the final whistle and Kilkenny are the winners the masters here 11 points between the teams at the end Kilkenny once again the All-Ireland champions and another triumph for Brian Cody and there you see Henry Shefflin, first man to win nine All-Ireland medals out on the field of play and that McCarthy Cup going back down to Kilkenny tomorrow night. They've all played their part. Tommy Welsh there jumping for joy. The honour is stacking up really for this the greatest hurling team that we've been privileged to see. A day of bitter disappointment for Galway. Well, they knew all along that trying to beat Kilkenny twice in the one championship season was going to be a big, big ask. He got nine points, Joe Canning. He held his nerve in the draw match and took it to a replay. But it's been all about Kilkenny from the time Galway went down to 14 players after 49 minutes when Cyril Donlan was dismissed for a straight red car. Six wins for Kilkenny in the last seven years. An amazing record, and it is party time once again for Kilkenny and their hurlers. Final score, it's Kilkenny, three goals and 22 points. Galway, three goals and 11. Liam O'Neill, GAA president, handing over the Liam McCarthy Cup to Owen Larkin of James Stevens, captain of Kilkenny, champions of Ireland, All-Ireland winners, 2012. Celebration time. Very, very popular captain Owen Larkin. Had a great game in the league final when they won that back in May. And now he's captained the team in the replay to win the championship. Hootaran the hair. Hootaran come and look last game. Aguini Usla. That was the card. The scene talk and loss of Winter Kilkenny Galair. It's a great honour that I stand up here, here and collect this cup on behalf of these Kilkenny players. We've had great times in the past and today is another chapter in that story. The other record we want to know is nine All-Ireland senior hurling titles for Kilkenny. Thanks a million, Brian Cody. I'd like to thank Galway. It was a great sport and game. You've come, you've come on an awful lot over the year and you've took your first Lancer title. I have no doubt you'll be back again. Three cheers for Galway. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. One more thing. Ladies and gentlemen, up to Kenny. Lee McCarthy is coming home to the door once more.